Good day, students. Welcome to mathgoodserve.com. In this uh, installment, we're going to be going over um, problems 16 to 20 of the Integrated Algebra Regents exam for June 2014. And this is part, part four of our review um, series. Do visit our website at mathgoodserve.com for a collection of a wide variety of math tutorials ranging from algebra to calculus. All right, let's take a look at um, problem number 16. It says, which equation represents a line that is parallel to the y-axis? Okay, so parallel basically indicates um, a line that has the same slope as another line. It never intersects the other line. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our axis. We have our y-axis going up and down, and we have our x-axis. All right, so um, this is our y-axis, and this is our x-axis. Now, a line that's parallel to the y-axis is going to be going up and down, all right? So we have fives here. Let me mark five. One, two, three, four, five. This is five on the x-axis. So if I draw a line parallel to the y-axis true five, that line is going to have a constant value. Do you know what that constant value is? So if I draw a line like this parallel to the y-axis, Regardless of the outputs, the inputs will always have one fixed value. This line is always going to be x equals what? This line is going to be x equals 5. Because regardless of what y is, x is always going to be 5. So the answer is option number 1. Okay? Now, there are all kinds of mnemonic devices that um, <clears throat> teachers use to help students remember the orientation of lines. One of them, for example, is if you have y, you write your y in this direction. Let me draw it again. So if you if you have an equation that has just y by itself, the y pointing in that direction means that if you have y equals, like in this case, it's going to be a horizontal line. Okay? Horizontal because the y is pointing in that direction, and then x basically points in the in the downward direction, like that. Let me draw it again. So y points in the horizontal direction, and then you write your x like this. So if you have x by itself, it's going to be a vertical line. So in this case, this is vertical, and this is horizontal, and any line parallel to the y-axis is going to be vertical, okay? That's one way of remembering it. Um, another way of remembering it is using the whole idea of extreme and boring slopes, okay? So if you think about a vertical line, let me erase this. Um, if you think about a vertical line, what what uh, slope does a vertical line have? If you are a skier and you're asked to ski down a vertical slope, what would you call it? Would it be boring or extreme? By all means, uh, if you're skiing down a slope that's vertical, this is as extreme as it gets. I like to call this the extreme slope. And then that x basically tells you that is x equals some constant value. And this slope is undefined. That's why it's extreme. Okay? Extreme, remember, goes up and down, and then the other one is the boring slope. So what do you do when, you bo when you're bored? You yawn, right? I, I call this the yawning slope. So this is the yawning slope. Why is, it, why is that the case? Who wants to ski on a flat slope? Okay, so this is the flat slope. The uh, horizontal line is y equals. It's like the boring or yawning slope. It has a zero slope. And the other one is extreme. That's... Um, that's an undefined slope, all right? So don't forget y is the yawning or the flat line going horizontally. Remember, your y points in this direction. And then the extreme line, x equals, is always vertical, is the extreme case where you have infinite slope, all right? So those are just some ways of remembering the orientation of the uh, equation for horizontal and vertical lines. All right, let's take a look at problem number 17. It says, in right triangle ABC, shown below, AC is 12, BC is 16, and AB is 20. Which equation is not correct? So which of these is not correct? Now, anytime you're using right triangle trig is always with reference to an angle, okay? In this situation, we have A as a reference angle for options one and two, and then we have B as a reference angle for options um, three and four. So what are we going to do? 
So what I, the best thing to do is I like to draw two separate triangles, all right? One triangle will be for my A, and then the second triangle will be for my B. Okay, so I have my two triangles. This is just a copy of this other one right here. So um, what relates an angle with a pair of sides, with a ratio of two sides, is um, Sokatoa. Hopefully you remember what that means. Sokatoa basically tells you that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So for the A's, for options one and two, we're going to be using angle A as a reference angle. What does that mean? It means that that is the orientation we're going to use to label our opposite and adjacent. Hypotenuse is going to be the same for these two triangles, okay? So if this is your reference angle, 16 automatically becomes your opposite or your O. That's for angle A. So I'm going to call this opposite for angle A. And then this is your adjacent for angle A. This is the hypotenuse for A or B. It doesn't really matter, okay? So I'm not going to give any angular um, specification for your hypotenuse. And then in this triangle, <clears throat> if we want to generate ratios for angle B, for angle B, this will become our new reference angle, which means that uh, this side right here will be the opposite, okay? So that's going to be opposite for angle B, opposite for angle B. And then this will be the adjacent for angle B. And then this is the hypotenuse is the same. It doesn't really matter if it's A or B. So you see how this interchange here. So now let's look at ratio one. This, I mean, I'm sorry, equation one, is it correct? So from ka, we know that cosine A is going to be adjacent for angle A over uh, hypotenuse, okay? So from ka right here, so opposite of adjacent. So adjacent for angle A is 12. Hypotenuse is 20. Is that what we have here? Yes, that is it. So it just checks. That's correct. Now let's check the second ratio, tan A. Tan A is TOA, yes? TOA in Sukha. TOA means opposite for angle A over adjacent for angle A. Okay? So looking at uh, the triangle where angle A is a reference angle, the opposite is 16, and the adjacent <clears throat> is 12. Is that what we have here? Absolutely, so that checks out. So our two ratios using angle A as our reference angle are accurate. So now let's shift to the two ratios where angle B is the reference angle. So let's start with sine B. Now sine in so katoa is a so piece. So means opposite. For angle B, divided by hypotenuse, all right? So our opposite for angle B is 12, and then the hypotenuse is uh, 20. So opposite of a hypotenuse, we have 12 over 20, and that is correct. So option three is correct, too. The last one we're going to check, hopefully that's wrong, because we're looking for the one that's not correct is tan of angle B. So tan of angle B is um, the opposite for angle B over the adjacent for angle B. So that's toa in uh, Sukha toa as we used over here, okay? So toa for angle B is gonna be opposite, which is 12 over 16. Opposite, which is 12 over adjacent, which is 16. Is that what we have here? No, so this is wrong. So the, the equation that's not correct is option number four. All right, let's take a look at question 18. Um, it says three times the sum of a number and four is equal to five times the number decreased by two. If X represents the number, which equation is a correct translation of the statement? All right, so let's go ahead and look at the first part of the statement. It says three times the sum of a number and four. So what are you tripling? You're tripling a sum, right? So you have three times what? The sum 
of a number. What is that number? That's x. So x and 4. Sum basically indicates addition. So 3 is being multiplied by the sum of a number, which is x and 4. All right, is equal to, we know what that equal sign is, 5 times the number, so you have to multiply the number by 5, and decrease it by 2. Decrement is minus, right? Decrease it by 2. So we have 3 times x plus 4 equals 5x minus 2. So the answer is option number 1. All right? Remember, the problem didn't say 3 times the number added increased by 4. It says 3 times the sum of. So you're tripling an already executed operation, which is the sum of x and 4. So that's why we have the 3 out here. Okay? So that's why our answer is option number 1. All right, let's take a look at number 19. It says, what is the equation of a line that passes through the point 3, negative 7, and has a slope of negative 4 thirds? There are two ways of doing, carrying out this, of generating the equation of this um, line. One way is by using the slope-intercept form, and then you can also use the point-slope form. Most students like using the slope-intercept form, so I'm going to go ahead and use it, all right? So everyone knows y equals mx plus b. So we have a point. The point that we have here is 3, negative 7. And then we have a slope of negative 4 thirds. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, fix this equation on this point right here and use it to determine what b is. How can we do that? Well, this information we're provided with gives us the value of three variables except one, namely the y-intercept, okay? So from this point, we can de determine that x is equal to 3 and y is equal to negative 7, right? Because this is the x and y coordinates. And then your slope is all is known as m, rise over on, is negative 4 over 3. What is your y-intercept? We do not know that's what we're looking for, all right? So let's um, input the values that we know into this equation uh, and then solve for um, b, all right? So let's write out what we're looking for. We want to find b, the y-intercept. So let's go ahead and do that. y is negative 7 equals mx, which is m is negative 4 thirds, b, which is 3 plus I'm sorry, x, which is 3, plus b, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. Now, how do we multiply negative 4 thirds and 3? We can put this over 1, and then divide 3 here once, and then 3 goes there once, and then you have negative 7 is equal to negative 4 plus b. Now, to get b isolated, we uh, simply add 4 to both sides of the equation, and then we have... Uh, b equals negative 3. All right, so b equals negative 3. So that's our y-intercept, okay? So all we're going to do now is just simply substitute, substitute um, negative 3 for b and um, negative 4 thirds for m into our um, y equals mx plus b equation. That's all we have to do now. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have y equals mx plus b. We know m and b, so we're going to plug it in. So we're going to have y equals m negative 4 thirds x plus b is negative 3. All right, so there goes your answer, negative 4 thirds x minus 3. Uh, where is that? Our answer is option number 2. All right, let's take a look at problem 20. It says, which parabola has an axis of symmetry of x equals 1? Do you know what the equation x equals 1 looks like? We just talked about that earlier. Remember, when you have a special case of the equation of a line, if you have just x by itself, x points straight down, okay? And then y points across. So we're going to look for a vertical line that um, is a line of symmetry. What does symmetry mean? It means that when you draw the line y equals 1, I'm sorry, x equals 1 on the graph, 
it divides the graph into two equal or identical pieces, okay? It's just like a mirror. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the line x equals 1 on, on the four graphs, on the four parabolas. And then I want you to tell me the case where that line divides the graph into two identical pieces. So x equals 1 here. Here goes the first one. That's x equals 1 over here. That's x equals 1. Over here, that's x equals 1. Over here, that's x equals 1. Now, which one does x e the line x equals 1 divide the graph into two equal halves? We can clearly see that option 1 is the answer because if you divide the your graph paper along this line, what are you going to have? This side is going to match this side perfectly. So that's what um, the whole idea of symmetry is. So that is a line of symmetry there. Okay? So that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. Do subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool clips such as this. And uh, do post a comment to let us know what you think about this presentation. We really appreciate it. More clips can be found on mat.serve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.